What is up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here, back with another video for you and today I'm going to be finally showing you how to overclock the RTX 3060 Ti graphics card. Well, if you were lucky sort of to get one before the end of the year, luckily I was and I did actually pay cost price for it as well, which I was super happy about. Um, the graphics card that we're going to be using for today's video is the RTX 3060 Ti Gaming OC by Gigabyte. <laughs> probably should have you know that was the intro Troy you probably should have made sure you got the model number right but yeah it's the gaming OC it's the non-gaming pro version probably gonna see it on screen um we'll probably have some b-roll shots for you here got a full unboxing video of that graphics card as well if you want to go and check it out now what I'm going to show you today should apply for all 3060 Ti graphics cards it's probably also going to apply to the RTX 3060 as well if a 3060 comes out as long as it's running you know 14 gigabytes per second vram which i think it will we know the 1650 super was a graphics card that was slightly down clocked on the memory but you were able to make it back up but if it's running the same memory speeds as a top stock 3060 ti then this video should apply to an rtx 3060 if one ever does come out which i imagine there probably will be now as always with these overclocking videos you do take it at your own risk and i do like to take it a little bit slowly so if you've just come to see the numbers that i'm dialing in there should be a time code on screen here i always like to approach these overclocking videos um you know sort of to someone that's never overclocked before okay so if anyone's thinking oh it takes ages and i do waffle i do tend to go on you know it, i'm going to give you the time code there all right but you know just just remember everyone's new everyone has to learn okay so we're going to talk about overclocking all right overclocking a graphics card so graphics card overclocks are always software based it's not something you do in a bios and there's plenty of programs you can use to do it um, I imagine most graphics cards that you're going to buy are going to come with some sort of tool like this. I like to use MSI Afterburner, even with AMD cards, where I think AMD's got a really good overclocking program. I just like to use Afterburner. It's because of what I've always used. And there is an option up here. This is called the OC Scanner, um, and that can just do an automatic overclock with you. So, you know, even if this today that you're watching, which I'm saying I'm going to really, you know, explain it as much as I can. If you find that you're really not getting that, you're a little bit worried because your graphics card could have cost you a lot of money. You know not everyone's got money to burn maybe you're just worried that it might blow up or fry or whatever just go with the oc scanner but we know this isn't going to do anything wrong all right nothing's going to go wrong nothing's going to blow up all right but you might have some crashes you might have the occasional crash you might get some blue screens so i'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can reduce that straight away so first thing we've got running in the background here this is heaven benchmark it's a bit of an older one now but it's just to have something graphical running on screen the whole time one thing I'm going to recommend is after you apply settings in here, you're going to want to run some more intensive games. I quite like to use Shadow of the Tomb Raider to validate my benchmarks. If it passes about five to 10 sweeps of that, then I know it's good. The overclock that I'm going to show you today, I've probably put about 40, 50 hours worth of gaming into it since I've had the 3060 Ti. Now this little overlay that you're seeing here on screen, this is River Tuner, which comes with MSI Afterburner. So this is a program that installs with it. Your overlay won't look like this. You do need to customize it to get it looking like this. If you wanted to check out a video with some really heavy customization on this, I would definitely go and check out Wolfgang's video. That's a really good one. I watched it the other week just to you know, brush up on my skills for a bit because I hadn't played around in here for ages. And you can even actually use, if any of you ever use Hardware Info 64, that is what I've got tying in my memory timings. And you can use it for loads of other stuff. I think I've also got it for GPU power. But that doesn't seem to be there at the moment so we need to sort that one out um but yeah you can really heavily customize this but the main things you're going to want a core clock okay you're going to want vram clock these are the things you're going to need and you're going to obviously want to see your gpu temperature as well okay so these are the things you're going to need now one thing i always recommend and a couple of people have mentioned like why do you say not to start this up why don't you want you running this at boot okay because you don't want to go into a program and load and overclock every time now, once you're confident and you're happy with your overclock, then yes, have this. But the problem can be is sometimes you might dial in too many settings in Afterburner. Your computer completely crashes. You reboot. Afterburner loads up with those settings still applied. You're then rushing, especially if you've got an NVMe. You're logging in and trying to get down here really quick, okay, and trying to kill your Afterburner session to stop that overclock load. And again, it's not happened to me very often. I think it's happened like once or twice in about five years, but you're like really rushing around to try and get rid of the program because otherwise you boot in and it crashes again it's safe though he says it's safe we're talking about crashes also as well you're going to want um unlock voltage control unlock voltage monitoring all this stuff turned on but it's completely up to you if you want to be tweaking around with voltage i'm going to show you how i'm going to do that in a second as well um, but you want all those on and also as well i did notice that the where are we 
I had to upgrade to the latest beta. So this is 4.6.3 to get core voltage unlocked. So anything after that, you know, it's going to be fine. OK, so you're going to have all your voltage unlocked. Now, one thing as well, while you're applying settings, we're going to actually apply some settings in a second. While you're applying this, you might find that this crashes. As long as you haven't got too far, boot it up again and then apply the settings, you know, with the settings applied. Sometimes just doing a bit too much tweaking in this while it's running will cause it to crash, but it will actually run fine stable, right? So the first thing we're going to want to do is max out the power limit, okay? So we're going to max out the power limit. I only get 104, okay? I've only got 104 on my power limit. Um, and that's because this is just an 8 pin 3060 Ti. If you've got one that's got dual 8 pins, you might find it says 110 or 120 on the power. Um, but that's the power limit there. Now with the fans as well, I prefer to use a fixed fan speed when I'm overclocking. So I'll set something to like the maximum that I like. Watch this. This is a little bit buggy on this graphics card. So if I go to 90, I should turn it down just a touch. Where do we want it? About 80%. Any, as soon as I go over about 85%, I get coil wine on my car. But that's that's the maximum I want. And then you can go into settings later. You can see on here. And you can build your own fan profile. But I'm just going to go with a fixed speed. And the reason we want a fixed speed is because we want to run this for a bit because we want a we want to know what our clock is. Now this graphics card says it boosts to 1770 megahertz, as you can see here, because we're keeping the graphics card cool. 62 degrees is cool for a graphics card. We're boosting at 1950, 965. Now all 3060 Ti's should potentially go between about 2050 and 2150. And I wouldn't buy the highest end model. A lot of people, you know, like the Aorus Master or the Strix, although they're very good cards, they almost come in at the same price as a 3070. You know, obviously, if we can buy it all at full retail. Now, you may think with those cards that it would have more overclocking headroom. And yes, it would have a higher clock speed. I think the Strix can go plus 2100 megahertz. But you'll actually find that you might not be adding as much core to it because it's already heavily overly clocked, you know, out of the factory. All right, but then you might even find that a non-OC model, you might end up getting an absolute gem of a chip and you can apply even more to it. But as we know, that's somewhere that that's a target that we need to go to. All right, so we want to get to 2050. So I'm going to do with my core clock. We're going to just start at 80. Just go in little increments and see what happens. So we've got 225 there. Okay, so you, and you'd run that for a bit, all right? You'd run that for a bit in here, make sure it's all sweet. Make sure nothing crashes. Keep an eye on your temperatures. Because the thing is, your core clock isn't just tied into the overclock, okay? It's tied to, it's tied into the cooling of your card and how cool it is. If we max those fans out even more, maybe if I took the side panel off my case, get that under 60 degrees, that would shoot up to 2050, 2070 megahertz, which is about where my card tops out, okay? So that's about where my card tops out. But I would say with most of you, it's probably safe to just start at 100, I've generally found that all NVIDIA cards I've purchased in a long time have been able to add, you know, 100 megahertz to the core. Now, as for the memory, this is going to seem like quite a big one, but this is because it's GDDR6. So you can see here it says 7000 megahertz. If you double that because it's GDDR6, that gets you to your 14 gigabits per second. So you should be able to add 1000 megahertz to the memory. I would recommend starting at something like, you know, 750 megahertz. OK, just dial that in. It's just something you feel comfortable with. Now, I know my fans have gone all weird again. Just get those. It's this MSI Afterburner doesn't like my Gigabyte card for some point. I think I need a... I'll have to wait for an upgrade. So we're, we're going to get the fans up there. And you're just going to run this, okay? So we see this. We've got this memory overclock. We've added some core clock. Definitely need to bring that temperature down a little bit. Let that cool down. I have actually got my case fans like ultra silent because we're recording as well today. So that's sort of, you know, that's just a nice little starting starting place. All right. Starting place for you. And one thing that I always recommend is profiles here. Now, on my 1060 and even actually on my 2060 as well, I found that my maximum overclock, there were two games that didn't like to play with it as much, but everyone else did fine. PUBG and Star Wars Battlefront. So what I ended up doing was just creating a profile for them. So we're still adding something to it. All right. And we're just going to save that, save that to profile one. So now you have a sort of slightly lower, you know, slightly lower one. Now I've been doing a lot of tweaking with this card. I'm going to show you just what my maximum was. So my maximum was 115, but to get it stable in all games, I've had to do my core voltage up to 50. 
Like I said, this is all just down to your choice, but you can see it at 1.62 millivolt, we are absolutely fine. And NVIDIA, I think they did it on the last generation as well. They've sort of set it, even with those features set to unlocked and all that, you can't really over voltage their cards. They've got other safeties built onto the actual, actual board, which stop you from over voltage. So even if you want to go up to plus 100, you should be fine. Obviously you take this at your own risk. You may find as well, if you're able to have a higher power limit, you may not need to add voltage because you're already putting more juice into it. So it's just finding a fine line about what you need, okay? So I know my memory can do a thousand megahertz, so we're just gonna dial that one in. So there we go, we've got the change here, eight gigabits per second. And then my final overclock was 115. Is that dialing in? So it all comes down to temps really, it's sort of between 250 and 270 it goes at. As long as I keep it between 60 and 70 degrees, the bloody fans again. This should hopefully be okay on your card. It just seems to be. It's the first time I've ever had it with the fans on here. So let's just let it roll for a little bit and see if it, as we call that card. Do you know what? In fact, we'll just max it out for a second. Let's just go up high. I'll take it down to about 85. I'm just going to see if that core clock creeps up as the card drops in temperature. So while we're waiting to see if that happens, how have I been getting on with this graphics card? Really good, actually. I've really enjoyed it. Um, it's a massive upgrade over the 2060 um, and especially because the fact that I sold my 2060 months ago trying to get the new graphics cards. So I've been gaming on a 1650 Super for a bit. So it's been nice because I bought a 240 Hertz monitor around that time. See if it's going up. Yeah, as the temps go down, it's going up. So yeah, it's, it's been good to use. But with a Ryzen 3600 like Battlefield, it's bottlenecking it a bit. Remember, it's like a 2080 Super level card. So I'm gaming at 1080p. So I'm definitely going to be looking at getting the 5600. Now, I'd say the 3600 is still a great pair with this. You know, playing more open world games, playing Cyberpunk on it, all stuff like that. It's not going to stress my CPU so much. But yeah, doesn't seem to be creeping up that much. But yeah, from what I've seen in gaming, when I was playing Battlefield, it was sort of sat at 2070 megahertz. But um, yeah, really enjoying the graphics card. Quick little guide there on how you can overclock with a little bit of an end of video waffling. Um, now, one thing I always say with these videos is please do share your scores in the comment section. I want to know what you've been doing with your graphics card. It's also great for when other people come on and watch. Hey, hey, 270, baby, told you. See, it's linked to temperatures. So, yeah, make sure you share your scores in the comment section. I always like to make sure that the scores are shared, um, that you can share them with other people. People know some numbers that they can start with as a dial in. Like I said, use profiles there. So, we're going to save this one now, profile two. And there we go, we've got a profile two. And we got a profile one. We can just drop it down. Something more casual. Is it gonna crash? Something a little bit better, a little bit more oomph on it. Let me know your scores anyway. I'd be really interested in the comment section. If you like this video, leave a like. Make sure you subscribe as well, and I'll be back with some more videos real soon.